today I'm going to explain you how to build your own European style glass terrarium. I will work again on a 12 by 12 by 18 inches tank to limit the total cost of materials. It will look like this and it will be composed of these elements that you can see now on screen. I keep the different colors to help you to identify every element. I let you stop the video if you want to see the dimensions of each line of list of pieces to cut. Before that we begin, I come back to the most species I used in my previous videos. In one of my first videos, I used Vesicularia dubiana species, and in my last video, called How to make a Mosterarium, I used Vesicularia montanii. I saw after 6 months of growing, that mosses don't have the same appearance. One of them grows with large fronds, while the other has the shape of a nice moss carpet, which looks like the forest moss. In the future, I think I will try to favor Vesicularia montanii. Now we can move on serious stuff. Don't worry, it's not a course on 3D modelization. I just show you how the tank looks with a 3D model. I used 4mm glass for all the pieces excepted for sticks, which permit to hold above ventilation mesh, these pieces have a thickness of 3mm, and the base of the tank, which are in 5mm. There is no need more in so much small volume, and I will keep this configuration until 20 by 20 by 20 inches. Beyond, I may choose a base of 6mm, but the water area is way too small compared to an aquarium, and the pressure is smaller, so there is no need to make more thick. You can see that the back of the base supports the back plate of the tank and makes the same width. In this case, 300mm and comes between the both sides. So we must consider this when we set the dimension of elements which come against upper parts of the tank. I'm adding left elements to show how is made lower ventilation part. Now I list the material stuff. I used a cork gun. L profile and upper and lower PVC rail for 4mm doors, tri and meter square, a measuring tape, a razor knife, stainless steel mesh, 180 and 400 grid sandpaper, gloves because for delay and cost reasons, edges of my glass panels are not chamfered and are very sharp, a sealant finishing tool, masking tape, pig tape we can find in painting department, then acetone, a scrapper and I forget a shear to cut the stainless steel grid, rags and paper towel. You must know that I didn't cut the glass by myself because of required practice that I don't have to get something clean. I decided to go in a do-it-yourself store to get my glass. The very first step when we cut glass is to clean all elements to remove dust and grease with acetone and paper towel or rag to be sure that all pieces which receive sealant will burn correctly. Then we must use masking tape to avoid overflow when we will apply then smooth silicone. This step is long and not interesting at all, but permits to get cleaner and more straight seals. Obviously, you need to think upstream what surfaces will receive sealant to forget nothing. When it's done, we can go to the bonding. But before, I proceed to a trial assembly to spot possible problems, but all seems to be okay. Before switching to the next step, I spotted some imperfections related to the cut, which I compensate by sandpapering with a 180 grid sandpaper. Then, before bonding, we need to think about the order to present pieces. So I begin by the back, then the front face, then sides, right and left. Front reinforcing plate, upper part, and finally profiles. Now I am ready for bonding. I degrease again, just in case. You must anticipate as well placing of thick tape, which will link base to other elements. So I place all tape pieces of base towards before I return it. Next step consists of bonding first the back side of the base, then tackle back plate on it, squeezing it and using a large and heavy enough object, in my case 2 liter water bottle, to maintain it before we place size elements. I place the front face after putting sealant on the right side and lower side. Obviously, I take face element into account to place them at the right place. Then I place the right side and I turn down the tape between the base and other pieces and the right side to the back. I place now the right wedge, then I bond the left side of base, back and front side, and I place left side plate and left wedge. Then I make a seal on interior angles, 
and I smooth seals with a seal on finishing tool, but you can use your finger. It remains only face reinforcement and two upper elements that I didn't feel to avoid useless to long video. Don't forget to remove masking tape quickly before seeing drawing. During sealant drying, I begin to prepare upper ventilation grid. I trace with a pen and I cut the mesh at the right length with a shear. Then I trace two squares on each side and with a section of 4mm. 4mm is the exact same size of glass thickness. This permits to bond the mesh to overlap the glass while the fact it is bonded below. I remove all the tape and I wait some days to be sure that all is dry but in the ideal situation be patient and wait one week before a waterproof nest test. Now I place water. It seems to be okay. To finalize upper ventilation grid, I bond my two glass sticks. I replace my stainless steel mesh and I bond the sticks onto them and I use tape to maintain the whole thing during drying. This isn't shown, but I use a small amount of sealant on each side where the green stands. In this way, ventilation becomes totally hermetic to insect escape, for example. Then I take my 10 by 10 section PVC profile and I cut two lengths of 300 mm with a hacksaw and a meter box to make straight meters. As you can see, these two pieces of profile will be used to create our lower ventilation grid. I take the dimensions to cut the mesh. For your information, I made my lower ventilation grid too large. I should have done it with 6 cm width, but I made it with 7 cm width. So I have to use 12 cm mesh and cut it in length, because this stuff is sold in 6 cm or 12 cm large in my country. I degrease again the glass and I bond areas which will be in contact with the mesh. Then I bond my PVC profile of the wall length with a tiny amount of sealant. Now I can place my mesh and surround it with profiles. I use the tape again to keep the grid in place and I let dry during 24 hours. When all is dry, I cut my lower rail profile and I use 400 grid sandpaper to smooth edges. I do the same in the upper rail and in the same way I place a tiny amount of sealant and I place the lower rail on L profile. You must check that rails are well placed along the side panel and not along the L profile, which outreaches necessarily. Then we can work the same way with upper and side rails. For your information, if you don't know, the upper profile is deeper to insert the glass door. We must now prepare our door, so the first step is to sand sides with 400 grit on paper. If we don't do this, sharp edges of glass will destroy rails and injure the whole setup very quickly, and it will be hard to slide. So I need to smooth upper and lower edges of each door. Feel free to use paraffin wax for example, with a candle to facilitate the slide. I degrease them, then I remove the tape and I place my door in the rails to check that all works correctly. Then I place the door buttons. Be aware that a brand specialist in terrarium stuff sells this about 3 bucks for 2 pieces. I bought mine for less than 3 bucks the 20 pieces and you can find this on eBay for 1 buck the 100 pieces from China. We use that for our doors, but it is exactly the same stuff we find with IKEA furniture to amortize noise of drawers. It is the first use of this object, so there is no reason to buy it 5 dollars or 5 euro. To finish, I can replace my doors. The last step consists to clean all the tank because there are some spilling everywhere, fingerprints and dust. So I use a scraper with a brand new blade to outcrop all spilling at the intersection and everywhere the sealant drool and I clean with acetone. Our glass terrarium is now complete. Thanks for watching my video and sorry for my bad English. I hope this one was useful for you. As usual, feel free to ask questions in the comment section. Please subscribe, like and share. Thank you for your help. Bye!